video is about feminist animals because nothing says the political, social, and economic equality of the sexes like parthenogenesis and pseudo-penises. <laughs> This week in Feminist Animal News, which is a phrase I've never said before, a female yellow-bellied water snake in Missouri gave a virgin birth for the second time via a rad asexual reproduction method called I was trying to think of a joke, couldn't do it. But this snake sister doing it for herself is by no means the only feminist in the animal kingdom. No, no, there is an entire petting zoo worth of creatures, both great and small, who are really challenging the cross-species sexual double standards and traditional gender roles. To help prevent non-consensual insemination, female ducks have evolved corkscrew-shaped vaginas complete with dead-end offshoots that lead not to their little duck ovaries, but rather just to a kind of place. How is this feminist? Because it makes sex difficult, which is what everyone assumes is what feminism is all about. Making sex difficult, not, you know, super consensual and by virtue of that even more enjoyable for everyone involved. Quack. Hold on to your fedoras, men's rights activists, because the female spotted hyena sports a pseudopenis. Technically a clitoromegaly or elongated clitoris, the pseudopenis means that when it's time for hyena sex to happen, the female must choose to retract her pseudopenis to thus allow the male hyena to penetrate her. The only anatomical downside of calling the shots is that the pseudopenis also also serves as a very narrow birth canal. Can male species be feminist? Yes, especially if they're seahorses. Female seahorses produce eggs per usual, but then deposit them into an egg pouch in the male seahorse, who then fertilizes them, carries them, and delivers them. But whether or not new seahorse dads also change dirty diapers, remains to be seen. A Komodo dragon named Flora is the Elizabeth Cady Stanton to that female yellow-bellied water snake, Susan B. Anthony. It also reproduced via parthenogenesis. What says feminism more than making a terrifying Komodo dragon all by yourself? Male red foxes set a shining example of why paternity leave is so important. In the first few months after a vixen gives birth, the new fox dads aren't like out hanging out with their buds or back at work after like two days. No, they're super attentive, going back and forth and bringing food to take care of their new family and also being really playful and interactive with their new fox children. If only corporate America could take some parental leave policy cues from Mr. Red Fox, preferably voiced by George Clooney. What naked mole rats lack in looks they make up for in sisterhood. Within this eusocial species, one female offspring is designated the queen and gets to reproduce, while all of her sisters are all like, spinsterhood is fine by us, and simply take care of the tunnels and burrows and offspring. In other words, it sounds like the underground feminist commune we've all been dreaming of. Lady elephants are basically the glorious steinums of the animal kingdom. They're matriarchal, they raise their young collectively, and they also have really, really, really good memories. And what is having a really good memory have to do with being a great feminist? I forget! Finally, a shout out to the rad femme female koalas who sleep up to 22 hours a day because they've figured out that the best way to beat the patriarchy is to just sleep through it. You know? They're so chill. <laughs> 